Bloody Bay. Bloody Bay. Bloody Bay. Who dares summon the Great Bay? I do. Transformers 5 came out last week. That's lucky number 13. 13 feature films directed by, hello, this guy. Bay has actually been around since the late 80s. Before his first feature, Bad Boys, in 1995, he directed a ton of music videos. Knowing that, you can see that style across most of his movies in the very striking images he's known for. While he does have some classic action films under his belt like The Rock and Armageddon, nowadays he seems to be the poster boy for loud, super heavy action blockbusters like the Transformers series. He's only directed two non-Transformer movies since helming the first in 2007. What are considered his worst films though? Let's dive in and roll out. These are the top five worst Michael Bay movies. Number five, Bad Boys 2. A lot of people like the Bad Boys movies, and I'll admit they're not all that terrible, but I need something to put at the number five spot. What was I gonna put, Pain and Gain? No, The Rock's in that. Yeah, The Rock's in that. Police detectives Marcus Burnett and Mike Lowry are partners on the force and friends outside of it. When ecstasy starts to become an epidemic in Miami, the two cops trace the drugs to a Cuban smuggler who's simultaneously involved in a war with a Russian mob. As this stressful case drags on, Burnett and Lowry's friendship begins to strain, and matters are made worse when it's revealed Burnett's sister, Sid, has been dating Lowry. Sid is also working for the DEA, and the trio end up working to catch the same bad guy. Martin Lawrence and Will Smith are entertaining enough in this movie. What's not great here is everything surrounding them, like rats having sex. Michael, there's a papa rat humping the shit out of this mama rat. No, he's straight pile driving them. Or comically running over dead bodies. <laughs> oh. Bad Boys 2 is definitely as lewd as can be, but it's rated R. What do you expect? Okay, didn't expect the rat sex. Or this. We need your car. Alright? Get out the car. Can you not get a better car than that? Let that man go! Don't be coming at me with that comb, Mike. Freak. I really should have been an actor. Freak! Honk honk! Explosion. Number four, Pearl Harbor. Look, I already had to talk about this movie when discussing Ben Affleck's worst performances, and having to watch it again sucked. Because this movie sucks. Of course, based on the real-life bombings in 1941, Pearl Harbor uses the attacks as a backdrop for a love triangle between Lieutenant Evelyn Johnson and childhood best friends First Lieutenant Rafe McCauley and First Lieutenant Danny Walker. Rafe and Evelyn become an item before he volunteers to help the Allies overseas. While there, Rafe's plane goes down and he's pronounced dead. Together in mourning, Danny and Evelyn become close and eventually form a romantic relationship. Rafe is later found to be alive, and his return is met with confusion among his friends. There's not much time for Danny and Rafe to talk things out before Pearl Harbor is bombed and the resulting action by the U.S. to formally get involved in World War II. Every time I see this movie, I like it less. It's over three hours long. Over three hours of Dawson's Creek, The War Years. What I find funny about this now is how we have the Japanese leaders being played by Aku and Shang Tsung from Mortal Kombat. Your soul is mine. I will find him! Oh, and Zod's there too. The only decent parts of this movie are the actual bombing sequence and pretty much anything with Cuba Gooding Jr. Why couldn't this movie just be about him and the events surrounding the attacks? I hate the love triangle in this. I hate the simplification of one of the biggest tragedies in American history. I hate Dan Aykroyd. I hate it all. Why was this movie made this way? Why, Bay? Because love and explosions and love. 
Number three, Transformers, Dark of the Moon. And so it begins. Sentinel Prime was once the leader of the Autobots during the war on Cybertron. When he's discovered on Earth's moon, Optimus Prime thinks bringing him back to life will bring victory to his team. Megatron and the Decepticons have other ideas as all-out war breaks out in Chicago. Meanwhile, Sam Witwicky and his new girlfriend Carly get back involved in the fray after Sam has trouble finding a job. I hadn't seen this since it was in theaters, and I'm not gonna lie, I couldn't get through it in one sitting. I thought Shia was at least bearable in the first two films in this franchise, but here... Do not hit my car at the collector's item! You moved his head! Wow! Wow! That alien's in wow. His parents are even worse. He's a millennial. That means they're the, you know, like, lost generation. They what had an mean? argument. You're a good-looking fight. Kid, but you're not gonna get a third one. I mean, unless you have, like, a big... What the f... My, mom, mom, Maybe you mom, just don't mom. know <clears throat> what you're doing. I don't wanna talk about this you anymore. You need the book. They got Leonard Nimoy to voice Sentinel Prime in this. Sounds like a good idea. Oh, wait, no, it doesn't. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. Yes, we get it. He was Spock. I know this is just a Chicago thing, but this bothered all of us. We're gonna use Willis Tower for cover! Yeah, sorry for destroying your city, but at least we brought back some new jobs when we shot the newer film here. We didn't. We didn't. Screw you, Chicago. Number two. Transformers Age of Extinction. I object! Mark Wahlberg as Kate Yeager is the most compelling performance since Mike Myers in The Love Guru. He's an inventor. Yes, we know. I'm an inventor. Love. Uh. Five years after the Battle of Chicago, all Transformers are outlaws. When inventor Cade Yeager discovers an old truck, he gets more than he bargained for as that truck turns out to be none other than Optimus Prime himself. As new threats arise and with Cade's family by their side, the Autobots now must reconvene as they're hunted by human and Transformer alike. They tried changing things up here with new human characters and it felt fresh at first. If this movie was an hour shorter, I might have been able to get through it without falling asleep. At 2 hours and 45 minutes, it crushes any goodwill it built up in the first act and turns into the same mindless crap the previous two movies were. And seriously, what the f*** is up with the creepy underage stuff in this movie? It's not cute, it's not funny, it's freaking weird! She's a 17 year old girl. We're protected by the Romeo and Juliet laws. I think she looks hot. I'm basically your uncle. I think she looks hot. I'm basically your uncle. I think she looks hot. They tried to bring some gravitas to this movie with Kelsey Grammer and Stanley Tucci, but they don't bring this movie up. This movie brings them down. The movies nowadays, that's the trouble. Sequels and remakes, bunch of crap. Yeah, nice. And the number one worst Michael Bay movie is... Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. This list is a farce. This movie made over $800 million at the box office. People love it. You'll love it. You'll love it. Don't deny it. Don't deny it. Love. With Sam leaving for college and the Autobots working with the American military, things seem to have settled down on Earth two years after the first Transformers battle. However, everyone is pulled back into the fight when Megatron is resurrected and an ancient Decepticon called the Fallen re-emerges on Earth. It's up to Sam, his girlfriend Michaela, and the remaining Autobots to defeat these dangerous new foes. I'm running out of things to say. These movies are all the same. I think it may be a general consensus that this is the worst of the Transformers sequels, though. I mean, we do get more animal sex than general humping. Mojo, no dominating Frankie. <laughs> Say my name. Say my name. What are you allowing to happen to your foot, you said? At least he's faithful, Sam. Yeah, well, he's faithful and he's nude and he's perverted. This is the Witwickies at their worst. I'm talking insufferable. They baked it with reefer in it. No, it's good. Yeah, no. please give me. Hey, it's my cheat day. Oh I'm going to eat what I want. Out. I'm a freak out. Hey, professor, I'd do anything for an A. <laughs> is that a Bad Boys 2 poster? Really, Bay? I thought about putting a meatloaf poster in there, but that seemed a little much. Michael Bay has shown that he can make fun and, more importantly, tolerable movies. He says this latest Transformers sequel is the last he'll direct. Time will tell if that's true, and we'll finally get something a little different from him, like 13 Hours from last year. For now, though, he'll continue to be known as the guy who directed this. <laughs> oh, 
oh, whatever. You may mock my Transformers films, but you've seen Transformers 5, and that's all I need. Just need you to see my movies, to get your money in my pocket, to do with it as I wish. You know what I wish to do with it? Make more Transformer movies. All I need for you is to see it, even if you make fun of it, and the explosions will never stop. The rain of Bay must flow forever. <laughs> Actually, I didn't see Transformers 5. I did a what? Yeah, don't plan on it either. No, I need people to see my movies in order for my career to exist. No, I'm fading, fading. Oh, what a world, what a world, what a lousy career. Love explosions, ah. Uh, I want to hear what you guys think. What is your least favorite Michael Bay movie? What do you want me to cover next in the show? Leave a comment and let me know. For more content, subscribe to my personal channel, youtube.com slash awesomewalter. Like my new Facebook page, facebook.com slash awesomewalterb. And follow me on Twitter to take part in more polls about what may be covered in the future. Come back next week as we count down the top five best nostalgia critic episodes. See you then.